Hey there guys, welcome to the Reverb live stream here today. Um, we are going to cover what we talked about uh, in our post last week. We're going to go and dive into more of the 1850s to 60s era, um, kind of the Wagons West movement and how that was affecting business here in St. Joe. Uh, so today we're actually becoming a very interesting subject matter, uh, which is kind of next to stabling. Uh, Brooke, would you want to you want to talk a little bit about what specifically kind of stabling we're talking about today? Yeah, you know, we're talking about um, what has happened to the town after the gold rush, right? Uh, we uh, see an evolution of fur trappers, traders, uh, and then, of course, businessmen coming into the area, capitalizing on the natural resources, uh, opening up general stores. Uh, we see warehouses pop up. Uh, this is also a time where banking, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of um, going off of our, our past uh, Facebook Lives. Uh, this is kind of an evolutionary series. Uh, of Definitely. what's happening. Um, people getting to the banking business um, from uh, the uh, grocery store uh, type of business. And then we start to see more of the recreational uh, businesses pop up, like the theaters, the hotels. We've talked about those in the past two weeks. Uh, so, okay, influx of people coming into town, uh, they need to store uh, their transportation. So, um, today we're talking about transportation development during that time. Uh, there was an influx of um, liveries, stables, and it was kind of like the parking garage slash valet slash rental car uh, boarding house um, of the time. So uh, this was before uh, automobiles came into the scene. And so today we're gonna talk a little bit more about what services libraries and stables provided um, and what levels uh, of service they provided uh, with um, their amenities, uh, where they were located in town. I know that that was one of the questions. What else? Um, we're going to dig into, you know, why did they exist? Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people know about stabling. We've all seen the Old West movies, mm -hmm. but talking a little bit more how libraries were a different type of stabling. Yeah, in the movies, um, after doing some research, it turns out that uh, inaccurate. Definitely. And I'm sure that doesn't surprise any of you guys that follow us. Um, before we do get into that, though, um, we are going to do a short video today that's going to show another one of our new exhibits. Um, but we did also want to talk about a great event that's going on here at the Row um, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're actually going to be holding a community garage sale. Um, we're going to be having some pieces of our own stuff being sold. We also have a number of vendors coming in that are going to be selling items uh, just you know as a community garage sale. You know, I've access to quite a few different vendors and groups that are coming in. Um, and if you are a person who's looking for a spot or you know someone who lives in an apartment or doesn't really want people coming to their garage, contact us. Like you can see right there on the screen, we have actual tables that you can rent. Uh, the indoor space tables are literally in a fully air conditioned building. And we fully understand the weather has been insanely hot recently and you're gonna be in air conditioning. So you have access to those. Um, we do also have some of those outdoor spaces where you have tables available to you at those spots where you can actually be selling your items and you'll know you'll have people coming to the facility for this event, so contact us. And Daniel, um, I had a lady contact me last week about um, the space of the table. Mm -hmm. How much space do you get? Um, so can, can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, so how much space do they get per table, yeah, would you so, say? Yeah, uh, so you're gonna probably get about, an, uh, the tables are eight feet long tables. I mean, you'll probably get about, you know, a couple feet to each side of that along with a few feet in front. So you're probably looking at about like an eight by four, eight by six foot space on the inside. Great. And then outside, probably a little bit more expansion because you're bringing your own table. Um, so if you're looking at somewhere to sell some items now and you know we're in the heat of garage sale season, definitely mm -hmm. contact us and get involved with this. Or just come and buy a piece of, your, of San Joe history. Um, we have some items that we're selling. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of other people we're going to be selling. So definitely swing by and come see us. Uh, so now we're going to show you guys a little bit of that trailer um, for one of our great exhibits here. And then we'll be right back with you to talk a little bit about libraries.
Hello and welcome to my bedroom and kitchen. In this room, you will find items from my life and the lives of my children. Let me tell you about my life. Livery stables were an important part of not just St. Joseph history, but world history. Uh, the concept of a livery stable naming actually dates back to the 15th century. Um, and originally, the word livery stable meant a stable that would offer care, feeding, and stabling for a price. Um, this definitely differs a lot from more traditional stables, um, where they offer housing, but you would be in charge of all the additional services, including food, feeding, grooming, and all the other products that you want to have happen. Um, livery, interestingly, still is a word we use today. I mean, it actually comes from the uniforms that were worn by the employees of early stables. Uh, they would offer the services as a business, so they'd have a uniform, which is known as livery. Um, we now actually use that same phrasing to talk about chauffeurs um, or the printing we see on a taxi cab or even a the paint scheme of a fleet vehicle. Um, or you'll see it referred to as that name for race cars or other businesses like that. Uh, so along with the stabling services, a lot of times these same livery stables would also have their own fleets, so to speak, of horses or horses and buggies. Um, as we spoke about a couple weeks ago with the theaters, you could rent a horse and buggy from a livery stable to go pick up your family or friends or even go take your date out on, a, on the town. Um, a lot of livery stables would also sell hay and feed and even wood for their customer use that if they weren't paying for the full service, which we'll cover in a second, they would still have access to having available to those products so they wouldn't have to go searching for them. I um, mean, a lot of times, they, as we were speak, we'll speak out in a minute, they were located together, but they were oftentimes located near hotels, inns, or train stations. Uh, so you'd have access to them when you arrived in town. Um, and so boarding and libraries still do exist today. They're not as common, obviously, as they were in the 1860s and 70s because we now have cars, uh, but they are still available today and a lot of people who own horses will still use a livery stable. Um, there are four major levels of boarding that you can actually use. Uh, the, most, the most expensive, the most intensive, and kind of what gave livery stables its name is what's called full board. Uh, full boarding would give offer your horse food, water, stabling, full stall cleaning, maybe even take your horse out for exercise. Um, it could also include grooming, uh, riding of your horse, uh, they might even have professional riders there to prepare your horse for competitions um, and even do some training of your horse if it's a long-term stay. Uh, they also would have partial board. Uh, partial boarding would offer your horse shelter, water, stabling, and a two feedings of hay a day. Um, if you wanted grain or stall cleaning or any grooming, that would actually be required as the owner of the horse for you to do. Uh, so you have a little bit extra requirements there, but of course that would cost you a little bit less. Uh, there's also self-boarding, uh, where the self-boarding is where all the care is provided by the owner, but stabling is available. That's probably a little bit closer to your traditional stables that you would see in the 1800s or we see in the cowboy, and Indi or the cowboy movies we have today. Um, there's also a last version, which is less common in the United States. Um, it's very common more in Europe. I mean, there was some in the West, which is called pasture boarding. Um, what that actually would be would be a paddock was available for your horse to graze in, but there was no additional services. Uh, you might be able to get hay in the winter if there's no grass available, but it's basically just a big field that your horse could go hang out in. Uh, next, we're going to dive into a little bit about the St. Joseph ones. Um, so I'm going to pass this over to Brooke so she can talk to us a little bit about local St. Joseph libraries. Library stables were oftentimes controlled where they would be located to reduce uh, noise. Uh, also, there was a smell. Uh, there was lots of vermin that came along with them because you would have grain, uh, hay, feed, uh, and, you know, uh, mice are hungry. Uh, it also became uh, an area that was um, glowing with gambling. Uh, cockfighting and stag shows, which is uh, just another term for bachelor parties. I wanted to show you a map of St. Joseph. This is an 1892 map, and uh, we have highlighted the area in which uh, these stables and libraries were located in St. Joseph 
before the turn of the century. And a lot of them um, with city planning regulations, uh, uh, it regulated this particular area to be a little south of downtown towards the river. Uh, so, and it was a very small space. You basically had a uh, two block, uh, not even a two block radius. So um, if you zoom in, you'll actually see areas around Edmond between 5th and 6th Street, uh, primarily um, areas uh, located just south of 4th Street. Uh, so you're really looking at 4th, 5th, and part of 6th Street. Uh, also, I just wanted to notate that um, some of these places uh, are... Uh, in our archive, and I wanted to show you a few today also, um, we have um, Clover Hill Library. Um, they actually sold and uh, had a feeding stable. There was the Gill and Casey's um, uh, Grand Central Library and boarding stable. There was the uh, Bus Brothers. Um, they were at 416 Massaney. Uh, we had Han and Elder Ringer um, between 5th and 6th Street. We had Maupin um, on South 4th. We had J.K. Burgess, South 5th, Alderman, South 4th. Uh, we also um, had quite a variety of others, but uh, within our city directory from 1860, 1866, and 1868, um, we saw an uptick of these uh, types of uh, amenities uh, for our growing population. Also, with the advent of automobiles at the turn of the century, many libraries actually converted from servicing horses to servicing cars and also became taxi companies. I do have a picture that I'm showing you here today that actually has a car and um, a horse and buggy. Um, there were cab services back in the day, um, you know, and when the transition to automobiles happened, it was just an easy shift. And you can actually go down some of these streets and see some of the remnants of liveries and mechanics um, that spawned from this era. I hope that you enjoyed uh, the video that we provided today about libraries. If you have any questions or if you have any information on libraries in St. Joseph, please do, um, you know, uh, send us a message, leave a comment, and we'd be happy to um, get back with you on that. Also, stay tuned for next week. We are doing a series on um, general stores, grocery stores, so kind of the evolution of the next step of um, um, uh, general stores. So, yeah. Definitely. We'll, we'll see you all next week, and uh, thanks so much for joining us here today. Bye. Bye.